Welcome to Fresno City Vision. I'm Randy Reed. All too frequently, we hear about the devastating impact of floods and earthquakes and other disasters, both natural and otherwise, in other parts of the country and around the world. We wonder, could that happen here? And if so, is our community prepared? While local government and public safety personnel are trained to respond to large-scale emergencies, additional help is often required. And that's where the Community Emergency Response Team comes in. The program is known by the acronym CERT. My guest today is Carla Glazebrook. She coordinates the local CERT program for the City of Fresno. And Carla, welcome to Fresno City Vision. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here. Uh, let's just start off by having you tell us a little bit more about the Community Emergency Response Team, what it is, and who's involved. Yeah. I, the origins of the program come from large-scale events like 9-11 and major earthquakes and the recognition that community members always want to help when there are difficulties in your communities. Okay. So the underlying principle is to prepare people to step up, uh, to either come alongside first responders or to assist in their neighborhoods when uh, first response resources are overwhelmed. Um, so we began the CERT program here in Fresno um, in 2003. Um, it's a 20-hour training program um, uh, supported and sponsored by FEMA and it provides people with the basic skills that they need to be effective um, support in their in their environments um, while uh, practicing uh, safe safety for themselves. Okay, now when you say people, I mean you're really talking about our friends, our neighbors, our Absolutely. colleagues, etc. These are not trained professionals Absolutely. who are going through this program. Mm -hmm. These are average citizens. Our friends and neighbors, uh, anyone uh, 16 and over with parental permission and uh, people 18 and into their 80s uh, take the 20-hour training program. Um, it includes uh, modules on fire safety, uh, using a fire extinguisher, uh, triage, medical first aid, um, and other modules that are designed to, to, again, keep someone safe, but also help them support other people in a crisis. Um, uh, individuals are generally the first responders in about 95% of the cases because mm. they're on scene when something happens. Right. Okay? And so there are things that people can do to help their friends and neighbors before the first responders actually arrive. Wow. And what kind of a response have you gotten from the community to the CERT program since it's been launched? Right. It's been fantastic. We've offered 38 training sessions of 20 hours each, and we've trained over 825 community members. Um, most people who take the class then decide uh, that they'd like to become a volunteer. And once they do that, they have an opportunity to join us for community service work, such as installing smoke alarms, uh, supporting first responders when there's a, a fire or a flood. It could involve sandbagging um, or coming alongside the fire department, for example, when there are large-scale events. Okay, and that's where I wanted to kind of go next because we have been rather fortunate mm -hmm. in our community to have not had a major incident uh, that you see in a lot of other communities right. so far. It doesn't mean it won't happen at right, some point, and it's great that we're prepared. Um, but in the interim, you do keep your CERT team members mm -hmm. actively involved in the community. We do. We, we offer regular and recurring continuing education across a wide range of subjects and um, also offer an opportunity to participate in city and county disaster exercises um, and, again, the community service activities. Okay. Where was CERT actually developed? You mentioned it came right, from right. some of those major issues, 9-11 right. specifically, right. but it originated in another community, right? right? It actually developed out of uh, the Los Angeles Fire Department after Northridge. Um, you saw that the um, event was such large scale and that first response resources were overwhelmed rather quickly mm -hmm. and there were parts of the community that were cut off from help. So the, the question was what could we train community members in? Um, that would enable them to be more effective in helping their friends and neighbors um, under those conditions. So the program was successful in Southern California. They've trained tens of thousands of people there. Um, the program was adopted nationwide. It's standard across the country. So there are literally hundreds of thousands of people across the country with um, standard training. I would say one of the unique factors here in our area is that most of our residents don't have direct personal experience with large-scale events. So un unlike people who live in an area where you might have a tornado, recurrent flooding, um, you know, wildfires and that mm -hmm. type of thing, um, we've been blessed with, uh, you know, relatively lower incidence of those types of events. 
but that also means that the average community member um, is probably not as prepared as a person who lives in an area where that might happen. Okay. And so we think it's particularly important um, to train people uh, to, to be personally prepared, uh, take care of their own safety, and then be ready to help friends and neighbors if, if called upon. Okay. Are there times where CERT members from Fresno are deployed to other areas, or is this primarily and exclusively for the local needs that might arise? Right. CERT is not ordinarily a deployable resource to another area. There are other organizations, including the Red Cross and others, um, that do, in fact, deploy regularly. Um, but we are primarily a local resource. Okay. And in the event that a large-scale emergency mm -hmm. were to take place, You've got folks who are trained through the program, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm assuming they would do what they could in their right. immediate area, right. but there is a coordinated response effort, I would imagine, if the police department needs assistance mm -hmm. or the fire department needs assistance. How would that actually happen? How would right. certain team members be called out to assist? Right. We, we keep uh, accurate information on our volunteers who have specifically indicated that they're available for that type of activation, and we have been activated by uh, police and fire um, for the wildfire in the river bottom, uh, also to assist the police department in uh, recent kidnappings. Um, our, our members are, like I said, both trained in the basic training. Uh, they generally carry personal protective equipment. They understand the importance of personal safety and operating within the chain of command. We don't self-deploy to events. Uh, we, are, we are a secondary resource to um, our area first responders. And are they, is CERT integrated into the City of Fresno's emergency preparedness plan? Correct. Very well integrated and also resource in the county as well. Okay. I actually had the uh, great opportunity to go through the CERT training and it is fantastic. Uh, presented by volunteers, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, but That's all correct. very highly skilled volunteers mm -hmm. that have worked in emergency preparedness mm -hmm. and disaster relief uh, in other areas as well. Uh, and at the end of that, I had a go bag mm -hmm. that I put together that actually I still have. Right. Talk about the go bag. What's the significance of that? Candidly, I'd never heard of a go bag when we first started this, okay. and so I, I can understand if other people don't uh, have one as well. Um, but the idea is to assemble a kit that would uh, primarily s support your own personal safety, some protective equipment, gloves, flashlights, that type of thing, um, and then some basic metal su medical supplies and things that you might need if, in fact, you were on scene of some type of event or asked to go alongside the first responders. So, again, the underlying principle is always to keep yourself safe because if you're not safe, you become a burden on first responders and then you're also not available to help others. Okay. So, take care of yourself, keep your go bag in your car, have your tools and equipment handy, mm -hmm. and uh, then be prepared be, be prepared and be flexible because we don't know what might come next. Okay. How often is the CERT training mm -hmm. provided? Yeah, we offer the class uh, several times each year. Uh, it is a total of 20 hours over eight modules, and as I said, it covers items like introduction to emergency preparedness, uh, fire safety, and small small fire suppression. We do the same triage system that our local first responders use, uh, life-saving first aid, um, disaster psychology, terrorism awareness, and exercise, and so forth. Um, we aren't intending to turn community members into emergency responders, but we do recognize that when crisis happens, because whether it's a car accident, a house fire, or a major event, y you are often the person that's first on scene because it happened where you are. Right. And then first responders uh, arrive, and, and we are always uh, respectful and responsive to uh, their authority. We're seeing some footage now, actually, of some fire suppression uh, exercises going on. It's a part of the CERT training. And as to your point, even if it were not a large-scale emergency mm -hmm. situation, a fire could break out in your house. Absolutely. And if you have a, uh, a fire extinguisher handy, as you should, yep. then yep. you'll be prepared to... Uh, Extinguish well, not, not only that, I mean, the basic first aid skills that you would use are, are, are essential if you have, whether it's a household accident, a workplace event, a, a, a traffic accident. There, there are so many more ordinary day-to-day uh, events that would still benefit from your having those kinds of skills. Sure. Now, is the CERT training provided just on an individualized basis? In other words, me as an individual, I want to go through the training, I mm -hmm. call you, or is it also provided to groups, organizations, mm -hmm. etc.? We, we've done it in almost every conceivable configuration. Okay. We always offer uh, public classes that are free because, as you said, the instructors are 
subject matter experts who donate their time. So the classes are all free. Um, and we open them to the public, but um, you know, as requested, we've also offered them to employee groups or student groups or uh, di different types of community-based organizations. Very good. And those who are interested in participating, mm -hmm. whether, again, they're individuals or maybe they are part of a group that they think would benefit from the training, mm -hmm. how do they go about signing up for the courses? Yeah, be, encourage people to either call me at 621-2328 or email citizencorps at fresno.gov. All right, very good. And then you'll keep them informed as, Absolutely. as far as the next opportunity to mm -hmm. go through the training. And no cost, you said? No cost at all. We do encourage people to assemble some of those personal uh, safety supplies that we would like them to have on hand ordinarily flashlight, gloves, that type of thing. But there is no cost for the course. Okay, and there's always a need for more folks to go through the training? I think always. I mean, I think 825 trained community members is significant. It really is. Um, but in a, in a region with you know 500,000 in the urban area and three quarter million in the in the uh, outlying area, um, yeah, I don't think you can ever have too many people trained to help one another uh, when the need arises. Excellent point. Good advice, Carla. Thanks for being here on the program today. My pleasure. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. My guest has been Carla Glazebrook. She runs the local community emergency response team program. And uh, you should contact her if you have inter information, or if you have an interest, I should say, in participating in CERT. It's a time well spent. That is all the time we have for this edition of Fresno City Vision. Thanks for joining me. I'm Randy Reed for the City of Fresno. We'll see you next time.